Today, I think we're gonna answer the question, how many pills can you take on video in a deposition before the attorney asking you questions says, hey, wait, wait, what is going on here? Hey, I'm Josh Sanford, I'm America's attorney. I'm so glad you're here for this reaction video. I have never seen this video. So let's watch it together, even if you've already seen it. So let's jump right in. And before I start this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna warn you that the first 30 seconds are boring. This thing is called a read-on and it's what happens in every deposition. I hope that you never has to be deposed or sit through a deposition, but this thing is the read on and it's what the court reporter says to kind of frame everything that happens after that, regardless of whether the witness has a mullet. Okay, so here we go. We are on the record at 916. Today is March 12, 2018. This is the video that testimony of Robert Bateman taken in the matter of Justin Monarchivist versus Jacob Daniel et al. Case number 17 CD 30522 in district court for the city and county of Denver, Colorado. Today we're located at 110 16th Street. The read on is actually boring, but I wanted I you to hear it. Video. Will all attorneys please introduce themselves to give you the titles? I can't believe Tom's this guy's drinking Subway at 9 a.m. What? Attorney Robert I guess you can get breakfast there. I don't want breakfast from Subway. Neil Sullenberger, attorney registration 48698 for the firm. Will the court report a police word in the deponent? Sir, we ask you to raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth under penalty of law? I do. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Abrams. As you know, my name's Tom. Okay, so that was a sick little power move at the very beginning. Wow, if I get this deep the whole way, we may never get through this. But he said good morning to him. That's not a question. So he didn't say anything in response. And he is a lawyer, so he probably didn't get prepped. He's representing himself. But the reality is, if you were like a regular witness and your lawyer was prepping you, they'd say, don't just talk, wait for them to ask questions. This helps him establish that he is trying to be aggressive and unfriendly with the questioner. So I think that we're looking forward to some tension. I'm Birch. I'm counsel for plaintiff Justin Moskowitz in this lawsuit. And do you understand why you've been asked to give your deposition today? No. He doesn't understand. Are you aware that your firm, Abrams & Associates, is a defendant in a lawsuit that's going to trial next month? Yes. And are you aware that you are a witness regarding the actions of Abrams & Associates? Yes. Have you had your deposition taken before? I think so. When have you had your deposition taken before? I don't recall. How many times? I don't recall. You have, you're sitting here today under oath, you have no idea whether you've been deposed before? I've answered, answered form. I've answered that question, objective form, move on. Mr. Abrams, have you been deposed Objective before? form. Objective form, move to certify the question. If you feel that I haven't answered, then you can move for a sanction. We're gonna go ahead and stop the deposition at this point and dial the special master. Okay, I gotta interrupt and say, there's some legal stuff going on here. So the first question they asked, or you know, the relevant to this issue is, have you been deposed before? The guy said, I think so. Okay, so that question has been answered. I think so. Then he starts digging into that. Well, how many times, when was that, whatever? And he's like, I'm not sure. So then he says, he basically accuses him of having not answered the question, have you been deposed before? He says, I think so. So when you certify a question, what that means is that you are going to turn the dispute about that question and answer answer couplet into a motion, which can either be oral, if you can get the judge on the phone, in this case, the under judge, the magistrate, or into a written motion where you, you know, you write an argument about it and you submit it to the judge for, I mean, for an answer. Here's what I want to say. I've been a lawyer for over 20 years. I cannot tell you how many depositions I've personally done or personally defended or the lawyers that work for me have taken or defended, but I would say it's well over a thousand, actually maybe closer to 2000. People talk about certifying questions. I believe that in my experience, one time, one time ever, have we actually called the judge in a deposition. You don't do that unless you are a raging 
We're going off the record. No, we're staying on the record, please. Oh. Okay. We're staying on the record. Lights out. Lights back on. <laughs> I love this guy with his mullet or whatever he's rocking and his sunglasses Would on you his be prepared head. prepared to read back my answer to the special master regarding counsel's questions uh. as to whether or not I answered that question? Good morning. Could we speak with David Tenner, please? Uh, let me check and see if, uh, if he's good. May I ask his caller? Thank you. Yes, these are the parties from the Moskowitz versus Dahlman matter, and we are in the middle of a deposition this morning. Okay, hold on just a moment. Thank you. We're four minutes in, according to the timestamp at the bottom. So dumb. He is not in the office with the oh. Can I get a number and have him call you back? Yes, that would be great. If you could please. Okay. I'll send him an email right now. Appreciate it. Uh-huh, you're welcome. Bye-bye. Mr. Stay Abrams. Stay on the record here? Yeah, we're still on the record. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Abrams, I want to ask you one more time. Have you had your deposition taken before? Objective form. Asked and answered. Move on. You need to answer the question. The question was answered. Excuse me. Have her read it back. Yep. Mr. Abrams, this is not your deposition. Please don't harass me. No, I'm, I'm not harassing you. We're going to move you. for sanctions I'm against you. I'm asking you to You're to not answer going the question. to allow He just her. answered the question. He did not answer the question. He just said he did not recall. That's an answer to the question. So it, it's your testimony under oath today, Mr. Abrams, that you do not recall whether or not you've ever been deposed before. Yes. He didn't say that. He said, I think so. He said, I think so. Am I crazy? If you have the closed captionings turned on for this video, you know that he said, I think so. Mercy, this is not something to fight about. And I want to apologize. I thought that he didn't have a lawyer because he is a lawyer and he seems so testy and upset, but clearly to his left, screen right, he's got a lawyer there. I didn't realize that it was gonna start out so funny. All right. So please read you the answer back. You need to answer my questions, Mr. Abrams. Please read the answer back. No, do not read the answer back. Like, Abrams. like this the answer will be right Let's back. move on. How many times have you been named in a lawsuit in your individual capacity? That's I can't recall. Question. Have you ever That's been great. named in a lawsuit in your individual capacity? I think so. Okay. And when do you uh -oh. think oh, that no. you were added as a defendant to a lawsuit in your individual capacity? It may have been, if I get it right, it may have been in the BB matter. So it's your testimony today you've been added. You, you were a defendant in a lawsuit in one matter, and that was the BB matter, is that Objective correct? Form. I think they added me as an individual defendant, and they lost the case that went to jury trial. I think that's my recollection. I don't remember it very well. The man, BB, attacked me in a stairwell. I actually have to say from like a per interpersonal interaction thing, his demeanor has really changed in the last 40 seconds. Do you see how he was fidgety and moving mm -hmm. around a lot? He just leaned back in his chair. He's definitely not exhibiting the idea that he's feeling threatened like he was in the first few minutes of the video. And I'm not saying that just to point out body language. I mean, I'm not a body language expert. I'm just saying when you're taking a deposition or when you're defending a deposition, you notice stuff like this. It, it actually changes the tenor of how these things go and whether, you know, a mountain is made out of a molehill or, or whatever at my garage and I think he named me individually in that suit and then he lost that suit. That's my recollection. Let me ask the question again, Mr. Abrams. Is this BB matter that you're referring to the only time you remember being added as a defendant in a lawsuit? Objective form. I, to my recollection, yes, that's my answer. And you said the other party was named BB? Yes. Okay. Could you, what is the, what was the other party's full name? Sean Beeson. We call him BB. I represented him in a matter where him and his wife were both arrested for DUI. He was thrown in a drunk tank for being belligerent and he sued the city. And then I put a restraining order on him for nine months for attacking me in a stairwell. And then he sued, I can't remember if he sued me individually, but I think he did. And then he lost that suit outright at jury verdict. So we're gonna move to strike that as irrelevant, uh, object to form. 
and that it's going to lead to non-discoverable evidence. Under the rules of Mr. evidence. Mr. Abrams, you are not me, you allowed to. Me. I am you allowed to no, interrupt you. This is my deposition. He's giving his today, answer. Sir. You can't. And my you answer. Need, it, this is, is my not, answer. You are not allowed he, to put objections on the record. You are a witness today. And Mr. Abrams, you are represented by counsel. Your counsel is allowed to put objections on the record. You are not today. I am a lawyer. Do you understand I, that? I am a lawyer. I don't need a lecture from you who doesn't understand the rules of evidence. Under the rules of evidence, the only thing that can come in under the rules of evidence is truthfulness and untruthfulness. So to the extent that you're trying to disparage me because you have me on videotape and embarrass me for things that you can't bring in, I'm going to raise, move to strike, find it objectionable, and then move for sanctions for harassment under Rule 30D. You can look it up if you don't know it. Mr. Abrams, <laughs> I feel quite confident that if any sanctions are entered in this matter, it's going to be against you. Well, Objective form. For continuing to obstruct and not answer Objection. any of my questions. Objective form. You cannot Objective object. Form. I just did. You cannot. <laughs> I just did. I'm a lawyer. I'm, I'm a licensed, unblemished <laughs> member of the bar. Unblemished. If you laugh at me one more time, we're gonna walk away. Hold on. Does he know I'm laughing at him? I cannot. I cannot believe this is like third grade. This is great. Okay, I'm gonna try not to enjoy this too much. <laughs> move for 30 D3 sections. We're gonna move for harassment sanctions against you right now. Okay, you're laughing at us with the videotape that you published on 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 the internet about you and your rock band and you're gonna be laughing at me. And you've moved for sanctions and had them denied every single time in this matter, and the jury should see that too. Every single one has led to no sanction. Mr. Abrams, are, are you aware? One where we quashed all of your subpoenas. And you, and you asked for attorney's fees and you got no sanction. Mr. Abrams. Let's move on. I wanna take a break and talk about sanctions. Now, in most cases, the primary vehicle for sanctioning is fines, it's dollars. and. It's not like it goes to the government. The fines are money that come out of the pocket of a misbehaving party or lawyer, we'll talk about that in a second, and go into the pocket of the other party or lawyer. A party can be fined, so can have a sanction entered against him or her or it, if it's a corporation, for the behavior of their lawyer, okay? If the lawyer is misbehaving, you can pay a fine for that. And also, and this is crazy, a party can be fined for the misbehavior of their lawyer. So both the litigant and the lawyer have to be well behaved on each side of the case. And that money doesn't go into the court except very, very, very irregularly. It almost always goes to the other party. So what you do is you file a motion for sanctions, you take it to the judge, the, the party who's supposedly done something wrong gets to defend themselves. And judges don't like to enter sanctions orders usually because it's a little bit like this. Uh, lawyers fighting like this is like kids fighting. Well, the parents don't wanna pick a side and say, oh, Bobby, you were wrong, and Sue, uh, you didn't do anything wrong. They just want the kids to quit fighting, okay? Quit fighting, quit fighting. You can imagine me saying that, right? Well, that's what the judges say. Stop fighting with each other. And so they don't like to award sanctions. So this guy's like beating his chest saying, you moved for sanctions against us and you didn't win. It doesn't mean that he didn't do anything wrong. It may very well mean that for this judge, the shortest line from where we are today and where we're trying to get to is just to say, everybody go to timeout. No one's getting any special punishment against the other one. Sanctions are really rare. I mean, it's, I know I think in movies, they like to show the lawyers fighting with each other and sparring like this. This is not how we do it. This is childish. Childish. I have a question you, for me. Uh, you sued me. You sued my firm belligerently under the abuse of your law license, where we counter sued you. We have a counterclaim against you for abuse of process for misusing your law license. We, you sued me for fraud, civil conspiracy. I mean, not civil conspiracy. Conspiracy, which is a cr criminal act. So you did that wrong. And aiding and abetting, which is a criminal act. So you did that wrong. Ask me questions about that, or I'm leaving. This guy is feeling good right now. One of his principal arguments is, if you don't ask me about these very narrow issues of this case, I'm walking out of here. That is not how depositions work, actually. Depositions are a little bit of a free-for-all, not totally a free-for-all, but you can ask irrelevant questions. Now, an irrelevant question, it doesn't mean irrelevant in the sense that you might say to a friend that something that someone said was irrelevant. It means that it's not likely to lead to the uh, discovery of admissible evidence. 
that's a pretty broad standard. You know, you're not allowed to go fishing or what's called a fishing expedition when you conduct discovery, which is the process of learning about the claims and defenses in a case. But in depositions, you're given pretty broad leeway because the questions and the answers are not going to go in front of the jury if there has been an objection to them. So if someone asks you a question in a deposition and it is actually irrelevant, like let's say you're, it's a lawsuit about a breach of contract and they ask you, uh, 25 years ago, did you get divorced? Your lawyer should say, object to form. Now, they're not saying that it's irrelevant, but it is irrelevant. And the objection to form is a signal to them later, prior to that testimony coming in in the courtroom, that they want to screen that and make sure that an irrelevant topic doesn't come in to the jury. But that's enough from me. I gotta see where this thing goes. Mr. Abrams, we're gonna be here for a long time today if you do not answer my questions. I just want to let you know that right now. Object to form. And put that on the record. Mr. Sullenberger, I'm sorry. This stop is, laughing at yes, my lawyer. This is bizarre. This is stop laughing at my lawyer and stop harassing us. Listen, um, let's, you let's, brought us down here for fraud. Ask us fraud questions. Mr. Abrams, how many times has your firm been added as a defendant in any lawsuit? As I can recall, one in the BB matter. So the BB matter and then this matter as well? Those are the only two times you recall that your firm has been added as a defendant? Yes, as I recall. Aside from traffic tickets, have you ever been named in a criminal action? Objective form. Uh, objective form and privilege, so I assert privilege and need not answer. What privilege are you asserting, sir? Attorney-client privilege and we would, <laughs> under the law, I need not answer that. <laughs> I don't believe he's right. You are allowed to object to form when that question is asked, and then you have to answer it. It's about criminal charges. There's, you, that's not like some secret thing. It's if you've been charged, it's public information. Now, the only situation that I'm aware of is if you had had that charge expunged. If you've had that charge expunged, then that information, you don't have to answer. However, expungement statutes specifically say that if you're asked if you have been charged and the charge has been expunged, you are allowed to truthfully answer the question, no, I have not. So there's really no set of circumstances which justify the kind of gamesmanship which he's playing. Oh, this is the perfect moment for a sidebar. Sidebar, if someone asks you in a deposition if you've ever been charged with a crime, you cannot claim attorney-client privilege. You can say object to form because the evidence of a charge is irrelevant if it didn't lead to a conviction and evidence of most charges is irrelevant anyways, but you can't just refuse to answer except in one situation. And that's if you've had the charge expunged. Expungement statutes specifically say that if a charge has been expunged, you don't have to say, yes, I was charged. You can truthfully say no. Now, the reality is you were charged. The charge was expunged, but you answer no, it never happened. And the statute says that's okay. Now, that's the end of the sidebar. Let's get back to the video. I'm just kidding. This video is just getting a little bit too long and I don't want to cut out all the great content of this guy losing his mind. And also, you know, all of my legal analysis and teaching you the rules of the game. But. Honestly, mostly this guy popping pills and throwing insults and acting crazy. So check in this Friday for part two of my reaction to this wild deposition. Now, you can make it easy on yourself by subscribing and hitting the bell notification button. Before you go though, I wanna know your pro se opinion. Do you find any redeeming qualities in this attorney witness? Would you ever hire this guy? Also, what are you looking forward to in part two? Let me know down in the comments and I will see you Friday. Bye.